Do you have five hearts? Or I do. That, or or that, is, that is an old wives' tale. You do, huh? I do actually have five hearts. Uh, two of them had heart attacks. Okay. <laughs> Pay attention. Creepy weirdo. I would like a strong, powerful woman to protect me. Mm-hmm. To fight for America. Yep. To be square. The Playable Characters Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to level 176 of the Playable Characters Podcast. And my name is Brian McGinnis. As you know that, your favorite host of Playable Characters Podcast for life. Um, welcome, everybody. What is it, August still? We don't even know what day it is anymore. It doesn't matter, right? The world's ending and you're listening to a podcast. So I appreciate that very much. That's all we can do now. Um, hey, follow us. I mean, me at Playable Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and also... Hey, you know what? Check out me, Brian, not podcast Brian, regular Brian. Check out my Ninja Turtles stupid review series on Instagram and YouTube. It's called Brian Reviews All the Turtles. If you want to kill a minute and a half every day, it's really stupid and fun. Having a good time doing them. I have 100 Ninja Turtle figures to get to everybody. Please watch them so I'll know I should keep doing them. Anyway, today's guest, you see, you're looking at your phone. You see, you see the name, right? You're like, holy shit. They finally got him. We've been trying to get this guy for, what is it, three and a half years now, right? Legendary alien worm guy. We love him. The game's impossible, but we love him. Earthworm Jim is here, everybody. How are you, Jim? Hey, hey, how are you, Brian? Hey, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Anytime. I've been trying. This is this is so cool that you're finally here. Thank you. It's Thanks it's for- a it's a it's a great honor, you know. Um, it's this is a really great. It's a safe space you've got going on here. I feel comfortable. Yep. I yep. feel good. I I feel I feel groovy. Uh, you know, for lack of a better term. <laughs> yeah, but I'm real groovy. happy to be here. And uh, yeah. And you know, if you need help, uh, you know, um, mm-hmm. wasting minutes of your day, like with your Ninja Turtles things, I've got some. I've got some pills, maybe that could oh. help you out. Some oh supplements. Yeah, yeah, you no. know, I could. You know, I could hook you up with my guy. He's very down to earth. <laughs> no pun intended. Is he here on Earth? <laughs> he he is on Earth. Oh, good, I, okay. I'm I'm currently not on Earth. Actually. Where are you? Where are you? I, I'm I'm uh, taking a little siesta, of course, hmm. in hell. Oh, sorry. Um, heck. Sorry, is this is this is this is this medium appropriate for children? It's fine. I said shit already. Okay, great. So it's okay. Why are you in hell, Jim? What happened? Well, uh, you know, I just I needed to get away a little bit, and yeah. Evil the Cat, he just he mm. has a timeshare with me, of course, because what more what better way to fall more into evil than to hang out in the timeshare and to go into a timeshare with a cat. Um <laughs> and I guess I owe it to him. You know, I did eat up pretty much all of his nine lives. It's yeah, okay. I I see that. Yeah, you said his name, Evil the Cat. Right. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. The names of your enemies and people in your world are uh, to us here on Earth a, a little silly. There's a. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I'll, I'll give you a few examples. We got Queen Slug for a butt. Do you still mm-hmm. talk? Do you still chat with her? Uh, well, we're not on great terms. Uh, sure. After all, I uh, famously went inside and fired ruthlessly at right. her anus um, until okay. she was completely defeated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that actually is her name. I don't, I right. you know, I, I don't want to to be misconstrued. And and for to corrections department, of course, my name is just Jim. So okay. please don't call me like Earth or E W. You know, I don't, I don't call you Human Brian, right? <laughs> you, so. can, you can if you want. Well, it just doesn't roll off the tongue very well. Right. Does okay. It, right. So, so you just want to be Jim. Just I'm just Jim. Jim. I'm just just, just right. Jim. Just you just. Know, it just, was something that those assholes in marketing came up with. They were like, well, we can't just call him Super Jim. Mm. We got to call him Earthworm Jim, I guess. That's what they thought when they were coming up with the first game. And it just kind of stuck, you know? I mean, you are an Earthworm. That's true, yes. From space. Well, I'm from Earth, actually. Okay, I'm sorry. There's literally no story. The game just starts, so we don't know. We don't well, know I'll, t- I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the true story. <laughs> That's what I'm here. I'm here to come clean and get it all out on the record. You know, I was talking to my buddy, Booger Man, and he said, right. oh, we've got this great, there's this great pe- podcast on Earth where nice. video game characters can come on and tell their story. So that's kind of what I was hoping to do today. Awesome. Let's do it. So I'm just 
you know, an earthworm crawling yeah. around on a farm in the middle of Oklahoma, just mm -hmm. minding my own business, sure. eating away at feces one day. All of a sudden, <laughs> hold on, why, why feces? That's just what earthworms do. You know, we 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 repurpose and we reuse the oh. soil and we work it back into the earth. We're very good for the environment. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Do you have Do you have five hearts? Or I that, do, or, or that is that is an old wives' tale. You do, huh? I do actually have five hearts. Uh, two of them had heart attacks. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, well, like, like I was getting to the super suit that I wear, it literally just randomly fell out of the sky one day. Hmm. So I hopped into it and lo and behold, it hurts like hell. Let me tell you when I'm inside that thing and I've talked to a few doctors about this, but yeah. they, they've said, um, it's probably the equivalent of things being shoved into your anus. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. We don't. So, some people like that here. Some people don't well it's essentially like that but all over my worm body so <laughs> when i put my body inside the suit yeah. all the little probes are going in and shocking my insides and really like oh doing a God. number on me so wow. you know i'm kind of chilled out right now i you know yeah. i'm not as crazy as you might remember in the games just sure. being like all wacky and throwing around catchphrases that's because <laughs> that's how i could deal with the stress that was all of those little tiny probes inserting themselves into my worm hmm. body see i always feel bad when i find these things out. i didn't know that i'm so sorry for playing your game so much because yeah, I, I just didn't know it hurt that badly. It you does still, hurt. You seem like you're having a good time. I, guess. I mean, I it's it's an adrenaline rush. I don't know what to tell you. Have you uh, have you ever done cocaine? I haven't. Okay, no. okay. Well, have you ever? Um, I've heard of. I've heard stories. Have you ever? Have you ever uh, had ecstasy? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Have you ever had a cup of coffee? <laughs> Once. I just don't like it. A very boring, Jim. Oh, all right. Well, maybe you'll maybe you won't know these sensations. What, what's <laughs> something that gives you like a true adrenaline rush? Uh, mm -hmm. Like a Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids, perfect. So it's imagine like you've got like a thousand Sour Patch <laughs> right. Kids in your mouth all at once. Oh, it's gonna hurt your tongue. It's gotta hurt your tongue, but yeah. all over your entire body. Imagine because okay. my entire body essentially is a tongue, of course. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that the suit uh, turns out that uh, suit wasn't so randomly fallen out of the sky. Uh, mm. My <laughs> my dear old buddy, Psycho, mm. he was he's a bounty hunter. You see, he's an intergalactic bounty hunter, and he was supposed to be delivering it uh, for some is, sort of evil intentions. Is there any other kind of bounty hunter or are they always intergalactic? Uh, well, there are some bounty hunters here on Earth, right? There was dog dog, <laughs> the bounty hunter. That's true. We try to we try to forget him, but yeah, that was that was our mistake. Why is that? Did that something was, happen? He's pretty bad. He's a terrible person. Oh God! Yeah, well, I know a lot about terrible people, so maybe I'll give him a call after this. Queen slug of the butt. Queen slug butt. Whatever. Queen <laughs> Queen slug for a butt. Queen slug. I'm so sorry, Queen. If you're and listening. I actually think that's not even her full name. Uh, <laughs> But we can, we can, I got my buddy, my buddy Snot hanging out in my backpack so he can do the corrections department later. We can sure. always add that in there and post, can't yeah. we? Now, Snot is not Major Mucus. Those are, those are different people, right? Oh, yeah. No, no. They're, they're distant cousins. Um, you know, they're from a planet that's entirely made out of mucus. Oh, and man. I they, would not want to go there. They both have different agendas. You know, Major, Major Mucus and I, <laughs> he, he's just not happy that I didn't want to join his army brigade. Okay. So he's always kind of after me, too. Uh, okay. We, we used to go bungee jumping together off the cliffs there. Uh, but now, he just basically wants to shoot me out of the sky whenever he sees me flying around in my little rocket ship that I keep inside my pocket. Your pocket rocket. I want to talk about that. How do you? Like, yeah, my pocket rocket. Does it just fold up? Eddie? You always just kind of whip it out and just start flying away. It's it's part of the suit, man. I don't know what to tell you. The suit has like strange properties that can't be fully yeah. explained and scientists kind of want to get at it. But I figure, no, this technology is too dangerous. I need to keep it for myself. I OK, think it's probably it's probably a smart idea. We, we it's, don't it's. We'd yeah. ruin it. We'd ruin it. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's really cool. Uh, you know, it just you know, it's, it's like the size of those uh, Apple AirPod um, cases, you sure. know. And you know how you just kind of flip those babies open, and they're like, "Boop!" You're paired. You're ready to go. You're ready yeah. to hit the subway. Yep. Same exact technology. So oh. I bet you. I bet you. 
bottom dollar that those crackpots over at the Apple Corporation, they have the technology to do the foldable, expandable rocket in your pocket, oh, and they man. just don't do it. Imagine that. I would love that. I don't know what fuel it takes, but man, that would be easy to get around. I think I think it's they're trying to keep you guys here on Earth, man. I think they're trying to keep you on yeah. lockdown, all this quarantining stuff. Yeah. It's it's rough. Uh, yeah. But I'll tell you, they don't have COVID-19 ah. in, a, in other places. You That's know what it. I mean? We still got it here. We're still going. Well, other planets, they, they have their own infectious diseases, <laughs> some that are even worse, uh, yeah. some sure that they're... are better. I'm sure the snot world has plenty. Well, actually, snot's good for you, technically, is it? Not good for you, but it like it helps to. Uh, that means it means it's fighting diseases. All the mucus and snot I've heard. That's true, and that's kind of what Major Mucus is always after his mo. Uh, you know, I can't speak for him as well, but he is always flying around and trying to fight off the diseases or what he calls. But really, he's just kind of gross and. Yeah. And that's from a worm saying that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do. I'm used to dealing and rolling around in mud and feces all day long. And this guy is just nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's pretty gross. Um, so you you were, as we all know, you were extremely popular in the 90s. Yeah, 94, two, 95, my big years. Yeah, two, big. yeah two solid, solid games. Two eh, not so solid afterwards. Um, why do you That's think fair. You, That's fair. It is. Okay. Why do you think you haven't had like people want another like that we've heard rumblings there's been a game in development for like 10 years but it's probably not going to happen. I'm sure you can tell us. I don't know, but why do you think you haven't had the comeback that like let's say like you know Ninja Turtles we said before Ninja Turtles have been steady for 30 something years. BattleToads oh, yeah, yeah. is even making a comeback, you know? Oh, yeah, like yeah. ThunderCats made a crazy anime comeback. How can you think Earthworm oh, Jim has not? Well, are you difficult to work with, Jim? I wouldn't say that. I'm a okay. pretty easygoing worm once you get you to seem, know me. You seem like it, yeah. Got a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. uh, we struck it big with those first two games, you know? Sure. And uh, people complained it was a little too hard. It was difficult. It was and it so was hard. hard to control. That's because it was realistic to my experience, okay? okay. Yeah, you know you're... how difficult it is being a worm with no arms and legs trying to control a super cyborg spacesuit? Right. Very difficult. So. It has arms and legs, yeah. I imagine. Is it just like, like you said, it's all the probes, like electromagnetic exactly. pulses, I guess? All right. There's like a strange massage feature that really oh. just shoots an electric current into my into my backside, and it's just not pleasant. Well, it seems okay. Yeah, well, yeah. So basically, <laughs> these games are difficult to control and they're hard yeah. to live through because that's real to my experience. I worked with those guys very closely on those okay. first two games. Okay. Little spoiler alert sure. for anybody that finished the second game. No one. I'm not sure someone has. Well, if you had some cheat codes or whatever, maybe you could figure <laughs> it out. Or if you found some wizards on YouTube that might have gotten to the end. Yeah. You're telling my true experience up until this last moment where we reveal that myself and Queen, uh, not sorry, not Queen uh, Princess Slug What's her butt. Princess, Princess What's, what's her name? Yes, yeah. of course. And I have more to say on her. A I'm little sure. Later. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to come. I have a lot of confessions to make about that oh. in Psycho. So the three of us, it, it's a big comic goof that we all come out and we unzipper ourselves and we're all cows. We're right. like, none of us are actually part okay. of the characters. It was all a big ha ha joke. Gotcha. They came to us and they said, hey, we're going to 3D. Jim, yeah. are you in? Mm. And I said, absolutely. Sure. Let me open up my mind here with the inner recesses and give you all the information that I can give you. Yeah. Things are going great. We're starting to feel little, uh, little creative differences once mm. they start getting in there and they start seeing how deep and dark it is. They're having some difficulty with the controls and the mm. three dimensions and trying yeah. to figure it out. Long story short, I pieced out of that bad sucker <laughs> on the way. Okay. I was not going to have my name attached to it. And that's when I started saying, is this how I want to be defined as a video game character? Do I want to lock myself into this one mold, this one specific kind of, I got to be a goofy 3D platformer. I got to be the next Sonic the Hedgehog. I got to be the example of coolness. Right. No, I wanted to open myself to bigger artistic endeavors, you wow. know, man. Yeah. So I did a, I did a, did a brief peace out and they replaced me with the cows. Okay. Every single character in that game, they just, they basically got lazy. They tried to Jeez. copy what worked, put it in 3D, mm. and then use the, the cow replacements. Bogus, 
didn't work. Game was a big bomb. Mm-hmm. Of course, they don't know the difference. So old Jim's getting the the ass whooping for that one. Of I course. got you. It wasn't your fault, but people think it was. Okay, not my fault. I was too busy off doing a guest spot on the Clay Fighters game. You right. remember that? Yes. That was actually me, and I had a great time. I was thought that fun? Okay. I branched out well into the fighting genre, and I said, yeah. this is great. They approached me. There was hum- My manager said they were humbling, mumbling about Smash Brothers at the time, Ooh. but you know that was back in the 64 days, and they only had slots for 12 characters or whatever, and I said, you know what? I'm good. I don't have a greatest working relationship with Mario anyway. Who does? I mean, that's he's a tough guy. You know, it's not fair to other video game characters. He's out there. He's got his platformers. But then if he wants to do a different genre, if he wants to do a puzzle game, oh, it's Dr. Mario. If he wants to do a party game, boom, it's Mario Party. If he wants to do a racing game, whammo, it's Mario Kart. And that's not fair because then this happens. And you see this. I know you see this, Brian. I bet you talk to a lot of video game characters, a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my buddies, and you see this exact phenomenon. Yes. They, If they try to do that, they just, oh, they're copying Mario. No, they're just trying to break into other other genres, right? right? Like Sonic yeah. Racers. Oh, it's just a Mario Kart knockoff. It's fun. It's fun. No, it's Sonic trying to be a racing character. He doesn't want to be defined as the one type of character, right? Yeah. Crash. Crash has a racing game. Yes. And, yeah. and it, oh, it's just Mario Kart, but Crash, it's, it's not the same. It's not as fun. I'm not going to play it. The kids aren't going to buy it. Right. It's tough. It's tough being a video game character. You get locked into the one genre and you can't Break your mold here, okay? I, I got you. I, I, I never thought of it that way, but you really shed some light on this. That's that's a really good point. Um, fucking Mario, man. He's got the monopoly on all this stuff. Absolutely. My oh. my good buddy Solid Snake did a pretty solid job. He was in the <laughs> espionage genre. First, yeah. he was in like the 2D dimensions. Nobody knew what the hell was going on in Terrible those days, game. though. Everybody was on Quaaludes or whatever. <laughs> and now he's just jumping around in Smash Brothers again. He can just kind of do whatever he wants. It's really he, fun. It's a great opportunity for him, right? And he, and he brings his guns with him to smash i've got guns i've got guns for days my guns are big and goofy you You can't even see the bullets i'm all ready to go for smash brothers i already proved my 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 esteems in the clay fighting but you know i i digress right i was kind of trying to get into the metrovania thing and (laughs) and then that turned into hollow Knight. so it never works out for jim you know never works out well it did for a little bit yeah i mean first of all your, your guns um or I guess your gun, you can just put any type of bullets into it. You can put like 5,000 bullets into your gun. You know what I love about it? I play a lot of Call of Duty lately. No reloading. Yeah. No reloading on your guns. No reloading. You could, just, you could just shoot for fucking days with that thing, man. I, well, it's, yep, it's, until you run out of ammo. Right, then you shoot one. Yeah, but and then you just you find them lying around wherever yeah, you go. Oh, it's very handy, except for that one big gun that I've got that uh, kind of blows up everything on the screen. Yeah, it takes a lot out of me. Even the super suit can't handle it sometimes. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that bubble gun is all about. I'm not good enough at the game to make it far enough to know where that's useful. It's useful but... against very very small <laughs> enemies that you can't actually see on the screen. So when you're playing the game, it looks like nothing's happening, but you're actually fighting off small infectious disease that's floating around. And it's very helpful because there's a lot of elderly people in the game too. There's some grandmas that fall out of the sky. and Uh, yeah. Right. It, it's helpful for them because, you know, they're the subjects that are going to be harmed the most by these infectious diseases that are floating around in the air that we can't see. In that first level, there's, like you said, there's little, there, there's do- killer dogs. That New bite- Junk City? Yes, they, they, mm-hmm. bite your, they bite your butt. There's those bat, whatever the fuck, bird things. There's grandmas falling out of the sky and you steal their, you steal their stair climber thing. Like, it's a pretty, pretty involved first level, which it sets the tone immediately to be super hard why would was that your choice to make it super hard was it was it the company like why is your life just that hard i was working with the guys in shiny and i said i want this to be an accurate depiction of my life they need to know how tough it is okay to be a worm running around the galaxy and trying to save everything that they do i'm sure it doesn't sound like you got very far in the game did you brian uh by myself no i have watched playthroughs before so i'm i'm familiar with most of it (laughs) Gotcha, gotcha. So you probably didn't get to the very uh, tumultuous sections with my good buddy, Pete the dog. What the fuck? Like, out of nowhere, there's no introduction. He just 
you're just on that planet jumping over craters and asteroids flying at you and there's this skippy happy dog prancing yeah. around like that, yeah. what is his problem why did i you... apologize about that uh you know the developers they didn't they didn't know quite how to work into the story back in the six bit genre nowadays you got a cut scene boom it's all figured out there's but nothing then, to tell you who this dog was yeah that dog he actually um i'm actually his aa sponsor ah, um and i'm trying cool. to help him get to a meeting um, and it's not Alcoholics Anonymous on his planet, by the way. It's it's Aggression Anonymous. Uh, yeah, because he turns he well, if he falls or gets hit, oh boy, is he not happy? He takes it out on me every time. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very tough. And then, of course, um, in the second game, there's a level that a series of levels. I don't know why this kept coming back, but <laughs> you know, he he got into a bad rap, and he had a you know he had a little run in with a lady, a dog, of course, sure. and. Um, Next thing he knows, boom, slaps him with alimony, and he's stuck with 47 puppy kids. Oh, my goodness. And Why? he's got to move from one house to the other. I said, okay, well, I think the only logical way to help you is if I hold this giant marshmallow, and you toss him out the window, and I'll help you get those puppies back over to your new home. Because he's right. got to relocate. The puppies are too small. You know, when a, right. when a baby puppy is small, they got the little, like, the little nub and legs, and they can't right. quite move. So you the only way to get good. them over there, you yeah. got to toss them out a window. And <laughs> we thought Psycho was helping, but clearly he wasn't. He was just trying to be a manipulative asshole. Yeah, I mean, that that's one way to do it, but there's other ways. You can put three, four, five at a time in a nice padded basket, walk them over. I don't know. Oh, I didn't think of that. We didn't have a, a basket at the time. All I had was my rocket pocket and a giant marshmallow that we found rocket. lying around. Pocket rocket, right? You know, yes. things might have been different. I can't. I can't speak to. Uh, you know, I. I can't. I can't. I can't take back anything I've done. All right. Well, my I mean, actions are set in stone. I don't. It's all past. It's all a history, man. I mean, right away you asked me if I wanted pills. Were you on pills back then? Was it also? When you would spin around like a helicopter, that probably doesn't put you in a, in, in, in a great mindset. Do you are you in any type of program such as your dog or? Oh, well, it's, it's it's all pills, okay. it's all painkillers, man. It's all <laughs> it's all just it's all painful, right? Sure. All the probing that the super suit causes me to wear. Yeah. Sometimes I go so crazy that I literally use the super suit to pull myself out of the suit and right. whip other people, and that's just a slow, sli small relief of pain. Okay, that, that can numb the pain that I'm constantly feeling. It's. It's wow. really incredible. I'm, I'm so, so that's less painful than being in the suit, smashing yourself against like like a a rock monster or a dog. Oh yeah. Oh or yeah. Even, Sometimes it's a little different every day. Or even using your face as a grappling hook, like that that doesn't help. That seems like it'd be pretty that's, painful too. That's more uh, utilitarian than anything else. Sometimes you got a big uh, a big cavernous gap to yeah. get over, and the only solution that you see is uh, the the hook that hangs above. Little did I think, oh, I could just pull out my pocket rocket, maybe. But, you know, that thing is so, it's such a gas killer. I try not to use it all the time. I'm sorry. Yeah. Especially not for small cliffs that I could easily uh, whip myself over a la Indiana Jones style. <laughs> actually, right. now that I think about it, does Indiana Jones ever actually use his whip to propel himself over pitfalls? Because I feel like that's like a very common trope now. He, he might have won some picturing. Or it could be a different movie. I'm, I'm picturing somebody, you know, swing over a, over like over a, like you know, whip it against like a a bar up top uh, or a log. I don't know. It's a good question. We should go uh, watch them all. I'll check it out. You know, I think my buddy Banjo, he might have uh, connections with Harrison <laughs> Ford. He might be able to get to the bottom of this. So, hey Jim, are there others like you? Are you the only earthworm Jim? Or there is there earthworm Joe <laughs> or something? I am. I am the only earthworm. That his uh, super powered super suit. Yes, okay. there's no other earthworms out there. I do have, you know, five million brothers and sisters roaming oh, okay. around in the soil. And honestly, they're kids who I haven't even met. Right. It's tough. You know, it's tough when you become a celebrity. You kind yeah. of become removed from society, right? Sure, especially sure. as an artist. I, I had to close myself away for a few years, especially after that terrible Earthworm Jim 3D game came out. Not only that, <laughs> They made an Earthworm Jim platformer for the Game Boy that was completely trash. Yeah, menace to the galaxy. That's that's not me. Okay, I'm, no. I'm not. I'm not out there for that. I I moved to New York City for a while. I was oh. living in Greenwich Village as an artist, calling myself Earthworm Juan, <laughs> and <laughs> you know it's just really enlightening experience. I was just <laughs> staying up all night 
painting, whatever inspired me going out to the bar, mm. ejecting drunks from the side of the road and just going back and doing it all again, having some touring affairs. It was a really oh. tough time, man. It was a tough winter. And, uh, you know, I really feel like it opened my experiences, though. That was just one winter you were there doing all that stuff? That was, you know, the winter of 2012, I believe. Oh, pretty recent. Okay. Yeah, uh, right after Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> uh, it was my perfect time to shoo my little ship in there and Not just true. find a nice bungalow. The rent was real low because the power didn't come back on for weeks. You don't need power. You live on the ground a lot of times. I don't need a lot, man. I got my <laughs> super powered suit. I got my snot buddy. Right. And uh, I've got my memories. Just a pile of poo. You'll be happy. That's right. I've got my experiences and 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 and, and I've got an arsenal of weapons. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, seriously. It's real crazy, man. What, what, what were you... Again, we said before, the game kind of just started and the first one just kind of ends like whatever. Like what, what were you fighting for? Like, I don't know what the actual. Oh uh, yeah. All like, right. The cause okay. of this war. was. Okay. Okay. All right. Somebody didn't watch the full playthrough on YouTube. I, I did. There's, I, I know it happens at the end, but I feel like there was, it didn't really explain much as you went along. Listen, I need to come clean about it in the, in okay. the very first level. You remember there might be a part. It's very hard to miss where, you know, you eject a cow into the, into space. Right. Okay. Yeah. That happens. You drop a fridge on okay. one side. It's classic physics. Okay? Right, right. You drop a fridge on one side and you launch the cow. The cow is out of your path. I remember that. Yes. By the time I reach Princess, what's her name? Right. Which is, which, which is her name. Is is not actually her name. And I'll oh. get to that in just a moment. Let's dive into that next. Yeah. But Princess, what's her name? She's standing there. She's the damsel in distress that I'm supposed to rescue because back in the 90s, these video game junk shots, they didn't know how to write a video game story. Mm. So they're just like, I don't know. What does Mario do? He saves a princess. Cool. It's basically the same structure, and I apologize for that lack of originality in what would otherwise be a very original and groovy platformer. <laughs> so at the end of the game, it's a big ha-ha joke. You get there, and you go to rescue the princess. She's standing there all cute and pretty. She's yeah. actually the sister of Queen Slug for a butt. Oh, so you're, okay. She's kind of saving her, and the cow that you launched in the first level lands on top of her. Right smushing her into a flat pancake and the game shows me kind of walking away all sad and depressed <laughs> during the credits you just kind of leave her there i i do i leave her behind because but she wasn't dead she was blinking she was she, she was fine she was totally fine until until of course then the ca the uh the cliff edge <laughs> snaps and she falls right. in with the cow a la wily e. coyote or something like that exactly exactly yeah. Now her name really is Diane. Okay, oh, I, Diane. And, what Diane? What's her face? Yes, Diane. What's her face? Okay. But people, you know, they kind of came after us a little bit. They came after me and the writing staff. They said, uh, you know, this is a this is a sexist game. You can't mm. be doing this, especially after the Me Too era. Of course, they wanted to like come after everybody that was yeah. doing a misappropriate treating of women. And I do, I do agree. That the, her story was not fully told, fully realized here. And I right. did really care for Diane, what's her name? And that's her actual name, okay? okay. And I'm not her only ex-boyfriend, okay? She also sure. um, she so also wrong. used to date the lead singer of Green Day. Really? Uh, Billy Joe Armstrong. Yeah, he wrote a song about her. It's the last song on the American Idiot album from 2004 and I only was listening to it because I was on a I was on a big I got to go into the middle of the woods stay out in the campfire all night and listen to vinyl and I was trying to come up with a new album on my accordion <laughs> how'd, how'd that uh, go that went great I actually released several albums under really? the name Juanus Earthwormo Okay. You can find them usually on your, if you go vinyl shopping, if you go deep diving in the vinyl bins, you can yeah. find them there. I didn't actually distribute. I didn't want managers to know about it. I did it for the artistic integrity, sure. of course. So you find them usually at the low uh, barrel end. Gotcha. Okay. Anyway, they came after us about princess. What's her name? And you're like, yeah. that's, a, if, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's not right. And I said, well, I, I can't help it. That's what actually happened. That's the truth. It did yeah. kind of force us to take a look at ourselves, take a step back and reevaluate ourselves. Okay. And now I'm happy to report. She's going to have a much larger game. She's going to have a much larger role and more important role in the new game. That's coming out exclusively for the Intellivision. <laughs> 
that's true by the way they like it, watch yeah we're working hard on it we're very <laughs> excited you know i like as an artist as a video game character i like to stay five steps ahead of my <laughs> audience and i like to do the last thing that they're going to expect me to do you don't want to sell too many copies exactly did they <laughs> did they expect earthworm jim one and two to be a success i mean two they hope to be a success because right. one was a success right no. Do they expect me to move to New York City and become a painter? No. Do they expect <laughs> me to get lost in the mountains of Montana and record a series of accordion albums? No. No one. Did. You're never going to know what Jim's up to. Yeah. So what, now what, I'm back in the video game industry, baby. They they put a new coat of put, coat of cape. <laughs> they put a new coat of paint. Sorry, the suit is really stressing me out. <laughs> They put a new cut of paint on my first game. They slapped it out there in 2010. And now we're coming out with Earthworm Jim 4 directly to the Intellivision. That's amazing. That's so great. What do you paint, by the way? What, what, what kind of things do you paint? Uh, mostly nudes. <laughs> of Wait, worms are kind of nude, aren't they? Yeah, nude worms. <laughs> okay. Do you know the worms from like the game worms? The ones that like... The military worms? Oh, yeah, I know those guys. They wanted me to join their team, and I said, no, thanks. I make peace, not war. All right, nice. You know what I mean? And, they, you know, they they weren't too happy about it. They actually came over to my old house. I had a house in Malibu for a while, hmm. and, um, you know, they when I declined the invitation, I found myself waking up in the middle of the night three weeks later, and all of a sudden there were tiny little bombs and things chipping away at the oh ledge. God. It was very much like that scene in Iron Man 3 when Tony Tony Stark's house is being attacked by, yeah. and it, 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 it was oh, it was it was a it was a sad scene, but nice you know, I, think, I think they got their worth out of it. I think they put it in Worms of Warcraft or whatever they're yeah, after. Yeah, something like that, something like that. Um, so you did steal Princess's or Diane's crown after she fell into some lava. I tried to sell it on eBay for a couple bucks, but right. I was a different worm back then, you know. Okay. Yeah. Eventually, I did, uh, you know, with the money that I got from Earthworm Jim 2 and the cartoon series, I did yeah. buy it back for her. And she was very appreciative. Diane oh, nice. and I are on a on a nice speaking relationship now. That's, I'm happy to say. That's good to hear. I like that. Yeah. Do, do you know anybody else from back in the day? Like, do you know the Battletoads or like you said, you, said, you know, Banjo or something? Like anybody else you guys hang out? Oh, yeah. Uh, I play okay. poker with the Battletoads like right. every once in a while. They're really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the 90s, used to hang out with all the Ninja Turtles. Oh, I'm so jealous. You know who's you know who's a sneaky, you know who's a sneaky guy. The you know the real party animal there, Donatello. Okay, really? okay. Yeah, you might you might think ah, oh, Raphael's the cool one. Michelangelo yeah. is the nunchuck party guy. Right. And Donatello, that sneaky fuck. Mm. Is, he he somehow worked in his contract that he would have the longest weapon in that yeah. first game. <laughs> True. That's a smart. That's a smart Calabrino right there. He's <laughs> okay. the smartest. He's the smartest one. Yeah. He's, he's one smart taco. <laughs> How about the, uh, who else is there? Bucky O'Hare? That's around the same time. Oh, Bucky O'Hare. He, he's pretty cool, man. He, he, he told me some great bit of advice one time when, what, what right, right before Earthworm Jim 2 was going to come out. I was getting, you know, I was on top of the world. I was hmm. the peak, man. And I saw him backstage at a video game conference and he comes up to me and he goes, Hey, man, you're going to be okay. Oh, nice. And I looked at him in the eye and I said, <laughs> At least one of us is, asshole. Oh, I never saw him again. Oh, poor Bucky. Yeah, I mean, I wish someone would I just God, I wish I didn't say that. I was being a, I was being a hot shot. I was being a right. 90s. It was cool to be rude in the 90s, it you was. know, man. It was. I'm trying to change my ways. Hacky sacks, man. Yeah. That's when you knew you were cool. Hey, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I want I wish someone would do a game of all the people like you that had so much success quick success but then like you sort of sort of went away from the spotlight a little bit put put them all in a game whether it be a racing game maybe a fighting game i don't know that'd be a fun thing to do that there's a lot of cool people that you knew back in the day from the you're name. saying it now and it can become a reality do you understand this it could be this is what we're talking about when you study buddha and you get you know if you want something to become true you have yeah. to wish it into existence and make it happen so i'm mm. telling you right now you've got the platform you might as well start a kickstarter i you should get up and i'll call up all my old buddies and we'll we'll put it together for you if you got enough interest we'll get this going what kind of game would you want to do would it be racing would it be fighting would it be a real-time strategy i don't know you know you know i'm looking for something that's like 
like a theme park builder, but <laughs> a theme park that I would like to be part of. And that way, you know, it's free to play, but we can really microtransaction the hell out of it. Ah, uh, okay. Just in case, you know, because you always have those addicts, those little punks that think they know everything. They find the cheat codes. They're done with the game. I think, you know, this is in defense for the pay for play, uh, you know, platform, of course, your your Fortnites and what have you. You get in there and you really take advantage of those that want to take advantage of the game. Mm. And you don't take advantage of the casual players that just want to drop in and they can't play past the second level because they don't know how to get out of hell. That was kind of me for the yeah, and you can yeah. take that metaphor to the bank with you. I will. Hey, uh, real quick, do you know do you know you're rated the 114th best Nintendo game ever made? Whoa, really? That's pretty good. Almost 114, I mean, there's, huh? There's been thousands, you know, you're top almost top 100. Who put this list together? You? No, somebody maybe like Game Pro. I don't know. Someone sounds really that. official. Yeah, it's 114. Those Game Pro guys, they didn't want to talk to me back in the day. And nope. now they're coming crawling back now that it's cool to be retro, right? It's, it's very cool now. Oh, boy. We, we definitely hope we see uh, a, a, a revival of sorts of Earthworm Jim here. Um, you, you definitely will. As all you great. have to do is purchase a brand new video game system that Intellivision's <laughs> putting out. I don't right, know, sure. You know, with, the, with all the delays in production, you know, yep. it's it's going to be worth your money, okay? You're going to want to purchase this all-new system in addition to the two that you likely already have at home. Right, right. Because it's going to be, it's not your Switch, okay? It's not your PlayStation 4. Yeah. It's, it's a new experience. And you need to open yourself and be receptive to new experiences sure. if you want to break out of that mold that you're in, okay? It would be funny if, like, if, yeah, if your I'm game... I'm, I'm it, fine. I'm yeah, fine. It would be... It would be great if this, if your new game is one of the best games of all time and people had to buy an Intellivision for it. That's what they're hoping, man. <laughs> Good luck. I think it'd be great. Many millions of, of, of people around the world have a have a Switch right now if it weren't for uh, my buddy Link and that Breath of the Wild game. Probably not. Probably. It helps. Probably. Well, they probably wouldn't have bought it day one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's probably like the uh, Xbox system seller. Halo isn't going to be on the system for a while. So there you, you go. Know? <laughs> they See? just they delayed Halo a few weeks ago. So uh, who this, knows where? This is how you corner the market. Okay, you got to find a new a system that no one is able to get their hands on, and then make them want it more. That's true. Yeah, I I I think you 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 really know what you're talking about. I hope not not that you get well because you seem great. I hope you get the success back if you want it. You know what I mean? Or uh, things just kinda... fame, fame is a fleeting feeling, man. Sure, it sure is, man. This podcast. Well, let, let when when you. and you, I'm I'm sure you feel it with your eight million fans at your door every day. They're always trying to get those pictures. They're trying it's, to get the gotcha moment in the paparazzi. It's down to four million. So they're always trying to get pictures of me outside of my suit. You know how frustrating that is. Are you recognizable? Are, are you are you bigger than most earthworms? Yeah, I've got huge eyeballs that protrude out of my head, so I'm pretty easy to spot. <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah. I got to maintain a low profile, you know? I got you. I got you. Um, you want to play a good game with me before you go? Oh, game? this game. This game of yours. I've heard about this it's game. very popular. It's called Wed Dead Dead, everybody. So, Jim, uh-huh. I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, yeah. I heard that many people want me dead. You know what? Not me. Uh, Not me. Oh I, really? No, I think it'd be cool. Yeah. I, I, oh, you know what? Maybe, <laughs> maybe sometimes depends on the situation. I guess. Yeah. Let. I'll tell you why. Okay. So I'm gonna give you three choices. Uh huh. Tell me who you want to wed, who you want to bed, who you want to dead. You'll see that sometimes, even though you may like a character, in these three choices, they may have to go the dead route. You know what I mean? So the first one, if you look at your screen, I'll give you a little picture here. P.D. Piranha. Oh wow. From from, from uh, Smash Bros. He just got. A character in there. He's from the Super Mario series. He's a big Audrey 2 looking evil. Not, I guess he's evil. I don't know. He's a plant that eats people. So I guess he's kind of cool evil. sunglasses on there. He does have cool. He's a cool dude. He's a cool plant, you know? Not much else to say, but he's in, he does stay in a pot the whole time, like a big pot of dirt, which you may like. I used right? to, I used to spend lots of times in pots of dirt. <laughs> I know what that's like. I yeah. can relate to that experience. Exactly. So you two might get along. Uh, this next one, good role model, Doc from Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Wow. So, so we got Little Max Coach, right? He's uh, he's, he was a former boxer himself. Good motivational guy. He's always in your corner, keeps you in shape. 
Um, and just an overall good dude, I think it seems that's like. that's good. I wonder if he's ever professionally trained a worm before. Probably not, but first time for everything, right? Especially nowadays. And this next one from Overwatch, we got the Widowmaker. I know it's pretty small this picture, but the Widowmaker, Whoa! yeah, from from Overwatch. Uh, she's like purplish. She's a sniper lady. All right. Uh, she's got those long ass guns that just pew can pick you off from from a, from long distances. Um, and a pretty sick bod, I guess overall, as you can see, long hair. She's got purple outfit. Really cool character as well, especially if you like sniping. All right. Amazing. So, Incredible. Yeah, yeah. So what are your choices here, Jim? We got, again, PD Piranha, Doc from – Doc Lewis, I believe his name is, from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, or The Widowmaker from Overwatch? I, You know, I'm going to have to immediately bed The Widowmaker from oh, okay. Overwatch here. Yeah. She's absolutely my type, you know? <laughs> Tall and threatening and looks like she could kill me in a, in a single strike. Yeah, she can. But that's not somebody I could, you know, commit to full-time and long-term – but she's she's totally right up there with like a Cameron Diaz type, you know, yeah. true a true 90s goddess, I got to say. Yeah, look at that. And she's got blue skin, too. Yep. That, that's 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 that's, cool. that's out of this world, man. That's yeah. right up my alley. I like that. But, you know, that's not the kind of person that I would settle down with. I'd probably be more inclined to have a working and uh, a marital relationship with the doc from um, from punch out there. Right. Interesting. Now, okay. I, I, I'm especially interested because I don't have a lot of experience in a boxing game, per se. I have mm -hmm. some fighting game experience, so I think we could have a, a relationship that's mutually beneficial, okay? Because I know his, uh, his, some, some rivals of his, okay? I know that King Hippo guy. Oh, yeah. That big fat ass. He's got a lot yep. of dirt on Doc, and I would keep that under wraps in, as long as we were <laughs> married together. Yeah, gotcha. Good. And I'm sorry to is to uh, take this away from my plant friend PD Piranha, but uh, you know there's just nothing in it for me sexually or in as far as like a marital relationship mm. goes. I just there's not a lot to branch out of me from a from a literal plant in the grounds. You know, yeah. he's, just, he's just not. It's not. It's not a beneficial experience. I get no thrill from that. Okay, I'm a, but, I'm a I'm a I'm a worm that can't be tied down, man. See, I'm, I'm cruising across the galaxy at two thousand million miles per hour in my pocket rocket. So I've got enough stress with Pete over there. I can't have another Pete in my life. You know what wow, I mean? I got Pete wow. the dog. I can't add Petey the piranha. I'm sorry, he's dead. See, I'm surprised. I thought you'd want to live in there, live in his dirt. Look at that, huh? This game that, really no dirt can hold me down. Okay, I guess. Um, very solid, solid choices here. You definitely thought about that. It seemed like you had this in advance, which you did. Thank but... you so much. And to everybody out there who wanted to kill old Earthworm Jim when he was part of these three, you know, I guess I understand it now. You're kind of forced right? to make a decision. See, you never know. But I, 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 I gotta say, you know, for those questioning, oh, am I gonna have sexual relationships with a worm lest you forget i have a very powerful suit yeah it's got an opening has a has a, all the sexual organs built into it i can that's, that's, i can roll however you want that seems weird they put those in there but well, i guess why not i that's part of the mysterious origins of my story no one knows who made the suit and what for what purpose has it Only been i can assume that it might be part of apple corporation's uh products to take over the world has it been upgraded in the past 30 years 25 years or no I made a few modifications myself. Uh, I put a smoothie machine in there. Okay, that seems so right. I can, you know, if I got to put some protein, get my quick protein quick in there real quick. Just on the go. Yeah, and I also, I have to change out the threads in the feet every once in a while. You know, you, know, you sure. get an old pair of shoes, they get a little dirty. Of course, of course. Not that I don't mind dirt, but sometimes they just wear away. <laughs> okay, they ain't get no traction. And it's tough when you're rolling around in a literal pizza trying to fight slices of pepperoni. <laughs> you gotta have good traction you on your to, shoes. You have to. That's good advice from Bucky O'Hare. Get the traction on your shoes. Um, well, let's see what I'm going to do here. So I think... Uh... I'm sorry if you can hear Pete barking in the background there. <laughs> is that there was? I he... about that. Yeah, I'm supposed to take him for his walk. Is, is, is he skipping around and hopping around? Yeah, he's, he's just, he won't shut up. I sorry, apologize we'll... if that's picking up on the no, mic. No, no, no problem. We'll make this quick. So um, I almost want to agree with you here with your choices because. Because they are the perfect I choice. Think, I think so. Bed and Widowmaker would be great. Be, again, like you said, it'd be awesome one night, but to be tied down to a killer. Mm, I don't know. 
Although nowadays might not be, hey, hey, honey, take care of this guy over there down the street. Boom. You know what I mean? It might have. Why not? <laughs> Who are you trying to kill? You, you know, know I, I, you know, he hates my guts, but I can hook you up with Psycho. He's a very <laughs> inefficient killer. If you just want to scare somebody, It'd be like, hey, he's not wearing a mask. Get him, honey. You know what I mean? Yeah. So something like that. Wow. So, so we'll bet her. And the blue skin's intriguing as well. Um, wedding. That's, well, that's the only reason why people went and saw that movie Avatar. By the right. way, they were hoping. They just were they everyone's very sexually attracted to blue, uh, slim blue feet figures. Yeah, yeah. Look at Mystique in X-Men, right? 100 percent man. 100 <laughs> percent So Doc would be a good one to have around. Again, takes care of you, motivational, can train you. I would need some, I would love some boxing training every day. You know, hey, he's gay, get up. Let's go, let's go do a couple laps, buddy. All right, pal. You know, do something. He'll he'll really get me in shape. And that'd be nice, especially during this quarantine. Um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have Petey Piranha in the house if you wet him to kind of scare away other bugs until so he, he like eat bugs, right? Probably, I, I guess, or even other people. I don't know. You forget but, you're talking to a little literal worm here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you're not a bug. Watch what you say, buddy. I'm sorry. But you get like <laughs> you make, messing with you. Oh, okay. You make it nice, clean oxygen having a huge ass plant around the house all the time. Hmm. But we're, uh, I'll stick with it. We're going to, okay. Dead Petey Piranha here. Yeah, uh, kill so him. Me, yeah, me and you. I'll just, I'll just, I just want water him for a few days. Turn happens. him into mulch. Yeah. So those are my choices. So I, yeah, I agree with you, Jim. I agree. Good Thank choices you. there. Thank Anything, you very much. Any last words you want to tell our fans? Anything else you want? But before you uh, get on that pocket rocket and take uh, your dog for a walk. Uh, yeah, I've got, I got a memoir that mm. I've been, I've been writing. It's uh, nice. coming out with my co-creator Doug. He was uh, helping me pen it. It's, uh, it's part reality. And also part virtual reality. You know what I'm saying? Whoa, I don't, but it sounds great. Well, you'll have to pick it up and read it. It's going to be available only in one local bookstore <laughs> per uh, county. And uh, I'm not fully disclosed where actually the information is. Uh, I don't actually know. I can't okay. figure it out. But I'm sure you can get on earthwormgym.com and maybe they'll throw in a free copy with your Intellivision when you buy that in the year 2022. It's going to be great. I think it's on one... I think you'd only get your book on a nook. I heard the the out of the out of print oh, nooks. Oh, that right would there. that would be that'd be great for all the retro fans that could Keep bring the back theme. the nook. Keep the theme go with the television. That's yeah. good. Yeah, you know we've been working hard on this book ever since we started the game in two thousand eight years <laughs> ago. So you might as well. Uh, you know the good things come to those who wait. And the book is called uh, "Worming My Way Through Life: oh, nice. Etchings and Memoirs." From a worm who is super powered. Oh, wait. I, I just got noticed that Mario is already doing the reality and virtual reality thing. Sorry. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. This it guy, just, this pig, he's always just, coming in. It just came in on the uh, under the wire here. Sorry. This might be yeah. my bad. You know, I got to. <laughs> Are you telling people? I can't. I can't you know, I'm, I, I got some aggressive feelings about it, but have we aired those grievances? No. I got to talk to that guy. We used to be buds back in the 16-bit days, man. We used to go hang out at the at the bit bars and yeah. <laughs> chug back a few uh, micro micro pixels back in the day. From Tapper, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. All right, well, Jim, this has been such an honor. I'm so glad we had you on. A lot of a lot of retro leg. We, we had Toe Gem and Earl a few weeks ago. We got you today. A lot of retro legends. Oh, I um, love those guys. Oh, they were fun. They were Toe Jam was in prison. The master but, System Buds. Yeah, Toe Jam was a little in, in prison at the time, but it was still this fun. Is, this is great. It's like a high school reunion every day right? talking to these guys. It is. Uh, thank you so much. Everybody else, thanks for listening. And we will talk to you next week. Bye. Hey man, way cool. Bye. <laughs> Today's playable character was played by Patrick Reedy. Check out his improv show on YouTube every Monday on the spot NYC. It's hilarious improv comedy. And check him out on Twitter and Instagram at the Pat Reedy. <laughs>